Hello and uh, welcome to the Z Capture overview for setting up your system. Um, so let's kind of just dive into some things here. So first off, we're going to go over our uh, our shopping list. Uh, a few things we're going to need. Of course, number one, you're going to need your Z Capture system. Um, these are you know purchasable at zcapture.com. Uh, as long as you're using the Z Capture software, uh, you can use a whole lot of different options or techniques. Uh, number two, we're going to need a photography tent. The photography tent that we're using in our demonstration is 24 inches by 24 inches. It's a basic tent. costs about $35, $40 on Amazon or eBay or 101 other photography distributors out there on the web. Next, we're going to be using a 1000 watt softbox. Uh, the softbox has two bulbs inside of it and these bulbs are rated at 45 watts conventionally each. Um, next thing we're going to need is a roll of backdrop paper. This is the 50, 52 inch wide paper just so that we can have the light reflect in a way that really is ideal for what we're shooting. Next we need to get a piece of white foam board and the reason we use the white foam board is so that we can uh, very easily create a support to hold the backdrop paper flat that way we don't have any unusual gradients in the background very inexpensive very easy to use next we're going to need two binder clips these are the big giant clampy paper clip things and uh, we're going to be using those simply just to hold the backdrop paper in place and finally depending on what you're shooting you may need some glue dots glue dots are basically just an adhesive dot it's uh, somewhat temporary and can be repositioned and is just frankly kind of nice to work with. So let's go ahead and kind of dive right in here to setting up our, our shoot. Here we have all of the different things that we're going to need. Um, we've got our Z Capture system with all of its appropriate cables, our foam board, a roll of paper, our wheel, our tent in the center, and of course a camera. In this case we're using a Canon T3 here we have the tent basically set up. These tents unfold uh, from a very small shape and we have intentionally left the top unhooked so that here in the, uh, the next slide we can show you that we've used those clips to attach the backdrop in the back. Notice that it's a little bit longer than we need. Um, we can always trim it to length as we go. There is a hole that we have in the center of this specific backdrop uh, when you're setting it up for the first time. You'll want to wait until you have the Z Capture system in place to be able to take and uh, place that properly. Uh, quick close up here on the clamps holding up the paper. This is just so that you can see exactly what type of clamp we're using. Now we're going to close up the top of our tent. The tent basically is uh, held together with nothing more than um, Velcro and uh, it creates a very sturdy structure. In fact, sturdy enough that we're able to take our lighting, our softbox on top, we don't have any risk of it falling down. With the uh, softbox in place, uh, our paper in place, we're just going to roll the paper back uh, so that we can put the Z Capture system in and not have to worry about crumpling paper or things flopping around. With the Z Capture system, uh, we're basically going to put it right in the center of this uh, photo cube. Depending on the tent you're using, um, you may want to move it a little forward, a little backwards. Next, we're going to be connecting the remote control for the Z Capture system, and uh, this is simply done with a quarter inch uh, stereo jack. Um, two buttons on that, basically, to preview, start, stop the shoot sequence. Um, next, we're going to be connecting the power and the power supply and finally uh, the shutter jack that is for specifically controlling the camera and the camera shutter. So here's kind of a little bit of a zoom back picture and uh, we can see that um, everything has been connected. So the next step is uh, we're going to put the foam board on. Now uh, I've got a square here roughly 18 inches. Um, next we're going to drape that paper over now and uh, as you can see we've got the drive shaft poking through the paper. That creates a nice gradient for us so that everything blends rather seamlessly and the trick to really pulling that off is is well, actually this part right here, the wheel, um, and how we're going to work with it. 
So our wheel, we're actually going to be mounting to a sheet of the same paper cut into a circle. Uh, because of the way depth of field works on cameras, we're able to take and basically blow the background out and uh, create a very nice look. And here you can see the, the set screw uh, in the uh, wheel so that we can actually tighten it onto the drive shaft. Uh, if you don't tighten it well, it's going to skip and stutter and you'll wonder what's going on. Now we can see that the uh, wheel is actually placed with the paper there and already you can start to see how the wheel is blending into the background because it's the same material, same angle and the same light source. And here's taking that even one step further. So this is just me using the auto on the camera so that it was easy to shoot and we can see that the background is um, already merging with the uh, wheel in the foreground. Next we're going to start setting up the camera equipment. So we've dropped our tripod in front of the, uh, the light box. Next we're going to place our camera and uh, we're actually pretty close to our subject matter here. It just makes control a little bit easier. Now for those who haven't played with the remote shutter on their camera much, this is just kind of a, a quick uh, zoom in here. Uh, the icon there on the back of the camera, we have HDMI, USB, and at the top, that's the remote shutter. And what we're going to be doing uh, is connecting the Z Capture system um, into that jack specifically. As you can see, it's just got a micro um, stereo jack that connects to it. Um, there's our cable connected um, from the Z Capture system. Um, one channel controls the autofocus, the other controls the actual shutter release, and that's typically how they, uh, they work. So next we're going to look at the back of the camera here, and we can basically take a quick look uh, at the camera settings. We can see that our subject matter is actually in the viewfinder. we got a nice pair of stylish uh, reading glasses there. The big trick here is composing things so that they're going to fit inside of the actual uh, shot all the way around. So what we've done is we've hit the preview button, and what we're really looking for is to make sure here in the, uh, the viewfinder, the subject matter is always in frame as it rotates all the way around. And that makes life really, really easy for us. Go ahead and pause it. Nah, don't like that as a start position. So we're gonna just, oh, there we go. Uh, and do another start position. Now we're shooting through an entire sequence here. Uh, generally, um, when we shoot a sequence, the, uh, the sequence is actually 50 frames per rotation, but I wanted to do something a little bit higher quality, actually take and demonstrate what the uh, Z Capture system can do. And so we're shooting at, at 100 frames for this sequence. So there's 100 frames, 100 individual photos it's taking as it controls the camera, as it rotates the subject matter around and uh, takes and, and automates that all entirely for us. Now, I've sped this up and uh, so our actual shoot time on this was about six minutes and uh, well as you can see here we've cut that down dramatically so I think I multiplied that by about 10. Uh, once we have our sequence um, that's really where we get into the next uh, kind of chapter here of the, uh, the overview and uh, what we'll be focusing on there is the Z-Capture software suite and uh, here we can kind of get a little glimpse into what we're going to do with that sequence we just shot. Thank you for your interest in Z-Capture and uh, we look forward to seeing you again in our next video.